Shiny hunting has been around for many years, starting all the way in Generation 2. Who can forget getting a red Gyarados in the Lake of Rage? Well, I never played those games, but I'm sure some of you can remember that. Shiny hunting has been around since those days and has made an appearance in every single region since. From Kanto all the way to Kitakami, catching shiny Pokemon has captivated us and wasted hours upon hours of time for many shiny hunters. With each new region introduced, we are also introduced to brand new shiny hunting methods. Some might say shiny hunting is boring and a complete waste of time, but for those of us that shiny hunt, that dopamine hit that hits us when we get that shiny Pokemon is something that is a hundred percent worth it all those hours is is definitely worth it definitely worth it those those shiny pixels are are just so worth it guys it actually helped me get my job as a ceo of nothing i decided let's test my shiny hunting powers and try and shiny hunt in every single region that's right guys every single region the ultimate shiny hunting challenge. I literally want to become the shiny hunting globetrotter. I had to look up what globetrotter meant. I couldn't figure out what the, the definition was for a person who travels around the world and goes to every single region. I'm, I'm pretty sure globetrotter is like that one basketball team that does all the fancy tricks, but I don't know. No matter what region I went to, I wanted to be able to say, hey bro, guess what I got in my pocket? And then pull out like a shiny applin or something. The plan for this video is to try and do as many new shiny hunting methods as I can within each game and obviously within reason. No lie guys, it's gonna be my first time playing a ton of these games. As if you guys watch my other videos, you guys know I started off with Pokemon Let's Go. So I'm really diving deep into the shiny hunting iceberg today. The first region I visited on this journey of sparkly pixel madness was Kanto. So Kanto is the first region and it's probably gonna be your favorite region, especially if you're over the age of 27 years old. Uh, let me know in the comments if that's you. Kanto has been around in many games and it was even available in all three first generations. We obviously got Kanto in Generation 1, Kanto showed up in the Johto games, and we got the Kanto remakes in Generation 3, Fire Red and Leaf Green. We even got Pokemon Let's Go Eevee and Pikachu, which was released for the Switch in 2017. And that's honestly gonna be a great help to me, since Generation 1 didn't have shiny Pokemon in it yet, and Gen 2 to 3 have the shiny hunting odds of 1 in 8,192, and you know, fuck that. Pokemon Let's Go gives me my best odds of getting a shiny at around 1 in 1024. The shiny I decided to go for might sound a little weird to you guys, but I went for shiny Jinx. That might be the first time you ever heard someone said, hey bro, I went for shiny Jinx today. But originally I was gonna do an only ice type challenge for this video, so that's why I ended up going for shiny Jinx. Well, the method for shiny hunting this Pokemon was easy enough. I just went up and down this ladder and checked each spawn until inevitably a shiny Pokemon would show up. I'm sure the dude is looking back by the end of this challenge. After about 35 minutes into my first hunt, I encountered my first shiny. Arguably, one of the worst shiny Pokemon of all time, Slowpoke. Now to give you guys a quick history lesson, in a bunch of the older games, the reason why we have such bad shinies is because I believe they just switched like some hex codes around and that's how they got our shiny Pokemon. While nowadays, our shiny Pokemon are designed by designers like Galarian Zigzagoon and Guzzlord. Now, since that wasn't the Pokemon I was going for, I went for another hour and a half and got myself the elusive shiny Jinx. That thing literally popped up under me. Pause. Okay, hold on, hold on. Why can't I, fi why can't I throw this Pokeball? Okay, 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 please, please, please. Let's go! We got the Jinx, dude! Okay, 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 what is that at, what is that? Two hours and three minutes into the freaking shiny hunt, let's go! So for the rest of the shiny Pokemon in this video, I do name them, but I forgot to do that for Jinx, so if you have a good name for Jinx, leave it in the comments below. But with that, we are done with Kanto, and we're gonna cross that river and find our way in Johto. The Johto region literally put shiny Pokemon on the map, and some might say it's the granddaddy of shiny hunting. Gen 2 releasing is comparable to huge historical events like the Big Bang, the signing of the Declaration of Independence, the birth of the king, LeBron James, my glorious king. So let's infiltrate the land of Johto like Nicolas Cage and steal ourselves shiny independence. You know, that this sounded better in my script than it did uh, out loud. <laughs> We're basically just gonna accept this odd egg from this old man and hatchet. Now before anyone gets confused, let me break this down for you. Shiny hunting in Gen 2 feels like it was thought about intensively. Not only are we basically gifted a shiny Gyarados, this game is the first and only game that allows Pokemon eggs to inherit the shiny genes. 
no, no, not, not those genes, genes as in genetics. On top of that, they were the first game to introduce boosted odds hunts that Pokemon Generation 3 would completely ignore. And Generation 5 also ignores it, but we'll get to that later. In Pokemon Crystal, the daycare man for the first time you run into him gives you an odd egg, that odd egg has a chance to hatch into a variety of baby Pokemon. And each time that Pokemon hatches, there is a 14% chance that Pokemon is shiny. So basically a little bit over a 1 in 10 odds. Easy enough, right? You hatch those eggs, no problem. Well, let me stop you right there, guys. It's not that easy. For some reason, hatching eggs in Pokemon Crystal literally takes 11 to 12 minutes. And that's without randomly running over freaking Pokemon in the grass or getting calls from your mom. I was prepared for at least a couple of hours of resets, and what makes this even harder is the fact that a lot of these baby shiny Pokemon have some of the worst shinies of all time. Like, bro, what the heck is this? What is shiny Pichu? Thankfully, this hunt didn't take as long as I expected, as in our third egg, this happened. Huh? Is that Elekid shiny? Yeah, it's shiny Elekid. Let's go. Okay. We got shiny Elekid in Johto. But with that, we are done with Johto. I really feel like I'm time traveling out here. But for the next one, we have to hop a bit further into the future than you might even think. The next region on the itinerary is Hoenn. Home to Big Whale, Clifford, the Big Red Dinosaur, and Sky Satan. Also, the region where I actually got myself a shiny Mew. You know, just want to brag a little bit. Now, if I were to shiny hunt in Generation 3 of the Hoenn games, like Emerald, Sapphire, Ruby, I would be limited to random encounters, and that just sounds boring to me. So let's instead head over to the Hoenn remakes, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. So at this point in Pokemon's history, a ton of new shiny hunting methods were introduced like Poker Radar, Masuda Method, Dex Nav, and Chain Fishing. This is the first time I have ever shiny hunted in these games. Let's go ahead and test out something new. Let's do the Dex Nav, and the Pokemon that went for was gonna be Wurmple, since this little purple guy is just awesome. The problem with Dex Nav, honestly, there seems to be like no real information on what the correct way to shiny hunt is. I watched like 10 videos from like eight years ago and literally nothing made any sense as to what the correct way to shiny hunt was. I was going through Reddit forums. I was watching all of A Drive's videos. Three videos when you look up Dex Nav is just all different information and I was getting frustrated. To this day, there seems to not be a concrete method yet. At first, I started with chaining. Then there's just like research thing in the top right. Then apparently chaining doesn't matter. And then I was like, well, what the heck is the point? What even matters then? After a while, this hunting method just started to remind me of why I hate the Poke Radar. So I decided, you know what? Let's just abandon the deck snap. Sorry, Wurmple. The next method I'm gonna do here is gonna be chain fishing, which was much more straightforward. Each time you fish up a Pokemon in succession, your chances of getting shiny are increased by one. The chain fishing shiny odds get capped at one in 20, so your odds get capped at about one in 200, which is pretty good. Now what happens next is absolutely insane. After my fourth chain, Yo, there it is! There it is! Let's hit him with that great ball. Let's hit him with that great ball. What's that throw animation, dude? I've never seen that. All right, let's throw the Magikarp out into battle. Go Garp! Hey, there he is. Look at him shine. Pretty good. All right, guys, on our way to Sinnoh. We're taking the fast train there. With Hoenn completed, we booked our ticket and headed over to the land of Sinnoh. By the way, guys, if you enjoy these shiny hunting challenges, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. It helps me out tremendously. As soon as we arrived in Sinnoh, I decided the best course of action was going to be to do the Poke Radar once again. I thought the Poke Radar is just a thing I always got to do for some reason, even though I hate it. But the reason is it does give me the best odds of getting a shiny Pokemon. At a chain of 40, our odds are one in 99. And that's pretty freaking good in my opinion. The problem is there is a 7% chance each time you encounter a Pokemon that the chain will break. So the odds of you even getting to 40 is super low. I know there's an actual like breakdown of what the odds are, but I'm not trying to do all that. I decided to do my chaining in the early routes since those Pokemon were gonna be the easiest to catch. So I started my chain just with the first Pokemon I saw being Starly and my chain broke at 23. But that's okay, it's my first one. The next Pokemon I go for is a Shinx, which then proceeded to break at 22. Uh, the Poke Radar, quickly becoming my most hated shiny hunting method in any game ever. 
I understand if it's my fault when I feel the chain. Like with chain fishing earlier, despite me having to have the reflexes of the flash, I did understand that chain fishing was my fault. When doing the poker radar, it literally can happen by complete chance. You can do everything right and it will still break. Just another reason to hate on BDSP guys. Well, after hours, hours became days, days became more days. I was gonna say days became weeks, but it was just days. We were stuck in Cinna. I did finally get my lucky break. I finally got a chain to 38. And I decided I would not test my chances since my chances at that point had gotten to one in 400. And just like that, after a couple of repels, I got my first shiny. There it is! I was right! One in 400 was good! Let's go, dude! Oh my god, there it is, dude! Shiny Shinx! Thank goodness! Shinx is arguably one of the coolest shinies on this round. This round had like Raul saying Krikata and Zubat, but Shinx is pretty good. What surprised me was that my chain did not break after catching the shiny Shinx. So I was even able to get my chain of 40 and catch myself two more Shinx. And with that, guys, we have completed our hunt in the Sinnoh region, but something tells me we're gonna have to make our way back here at some point in the future. Or should I say, the past. So with the next region, Unova, we are introduced with a large problem. There is no way to boost your shiny hunting odds in Gen 5 at all, other than the Masuda method. Gen 5 offers us no cool methods, no poke radar, and no dex nav, and unfortunately no chain fishing, my beloved. And there's also no way, guys, I'm gonna sit around and hatch no damn eggs and do no random encounters, so I did the next best thing. I did what any sensible shiny hunter would do, and I stole the shiny from a child. Well, not really. So in Black and White 2, there are these locations called the Black Tower and the White Forest, and if you go through it and beat Benga at the top, you can return to Flokesi Town or Flosesi Town, Flo something town, and be Alder, and then Benga will come back and give you either a shiny Jatini or a shiny Gibble, depending on what game you're in. So, this was a pretty easy way to finish off Unova. Hey, look, guys, I had literally just gotten a full odd shiny Volcarona before this video began recording, and I didn't want to go through doing another one of these, but at least, look, there's a Volcarona right here. Check him out, he's awesome. It was like 154 encounters or something like that. That, I, I got that. I got that recently. Full odds, no charm. Is there any charm in this game? I think there is. So our trip to Unova was a short one, but again, I'm sure we will be back in the future. Oh man, guys, I don't know how I'm, <laughs> I am tired. I'm going around the world in like, what, 60 days? The next region we gotta head to is going to be Kalos, which also takes us back to generation six. In Kalos, we have access to Dex Nav, Chain Fishing, Masuda Method, and the dreaded OK Radar. Now look guys, I know at the beginning of this video I said I wasn't gonna repeat any methods, but I truly, truly did not wanna do Dex Nav or Poker Radar, so I just went back to Chain Fishing. Unfortunately, Chain Fishing this time just took way longer than before, and I failed so many times trying to reel it up at the correct moment. I swear, sometimes I feel like the game decided that it just did not want to give me the chain. Eventually, however, we did get to a chain of around 15 and got ourselves a shiny Quillfish, which is more or less an awesome shiny Pokemon. I also named him Boo. Maybe I'll come back to this region and attempt Dex to have a Poke Radar in the future, but for now, Kalos is complete and we can move on to the nice summer vacation to the islands of Alola. I'm sure my character is like on some travel ban at this point. I'm over here disrupting the ecosystem, stealing shiny Pokemon from kids, taking eggs from old men. Now that we made it to Alola, we have access to many different forms of shiny hunting, but the one I chose for this challenge was going through ultra wormholes. Not only is this the best odds for shiny hunting, it was also probably the most fun I had doing this challenge. So in Ultra Wormholes, the best way to get shiny Pokemon is to first go as far as possible in the wormhole, preferably you want to be about 5,000 plus light years away, for your best shiny hunting odds. Then, you want to go into the wormholes that have the two rings around it. The best odds go up to almost 1 in 5 if you do everything right. And no lie, I was having so much fun doing this method. I was doing it like in a Discord call, I was getting sucked into wormholes, pause, and it was just a great time. 
This is the first time I ever played through Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, and I can see why people really love this game. I would be beyond happy if something similar to this was brought back in the future. So after not too long, we were able to find ourselves a shiny Grumpig. We named this Grumpig Justin for some odd reason, and with that, our short vacation in Alola is done and we can go across the seas to the Galar region. One thing that's becoming obvious to me in my travels around the world, shiny hunting seems to just get easier and easier, doesn't it? In the Crown Tundra, we get access to Dynamax Adventures, which gives us the best chance to get a shiny at about a 1 in 100 chance. The only downside is we can only check for shinies every 20 minutes, more or less. The first two adventures we do, we go for a Rayquaza and then a Ho-Oh, but fail to get a shiny in either. But after a few more DAs, we find ourselves a nice Sharpedo. Let's go, Shiny Sharpedo! We take those, dude. Let's go. Oh, hell yeah, dude. This is my first Shiny Sharpedo I think I've ever gotten. Shiny Sharpedo goes absolutely crazy. There he is. Shiny Sharpedo. Go through a battle. That's hype. Oh, check him out in the water. Look at him. With that, we are done in Galar and make our way to the newest region so far, Paldea. But on the way to Paldea, something mysterious happens. We hear a voice calling out to us. The voice is none other than Arceus, who is just there to remind us that technically we still haven't gone to Hisui and there's no way I'm going to disrespect Arceus like that. I mean, Arceus is literally in the game's name. We got to make our way to Hisui. So we get dropped off in Hisui and we're dripped the hell out. I mean, check out my dude right here. He's going crazy. Well, in Pokemon Legends Arceus, the shiny odds are pretty freaking good. Not only can you increase the odds by increasing your research levels, there are also mass outbreaks and massive mass outbreaks which have even better odds. Mass outbreaks have a shiny chance of 1 in 141, while massive mass outbreaks are a chance of 1 in 315. But the benefit with those is we're able to see a bunch of them throughout the entire map. And that's exactly what we did. The first go around, we went through the Icelands and checked each question mark, but unfortunately, no shiny was to be found. I also had to check each of them before since I didn't have enough berries to feed this hungry uh, Munchlax. But I would have loved to get any of these icy dudes, man. We then made our way to the Cobalt Coastlands, but again, didn't find anything in the first try. Thankfully, I did get myself another massive mass outbreak in the same place, and with a quick look around, finally something shined. Is that... what? what is this dude? Hold on. Don't freaking move. Don't freaking move. We named this Happiny Tyler and had a quick photo shoot with it. Arceus then sent us back to the real world with his Sui now complete. And we're heading to Paldea. In Paldea, there aren't too many shiny hunting methods, but mass outbreaks do get brought over from his Sui. So when doing mass outbreaks without the charm, your odds are going to be full odds. But with the sandwich, you get your odds all the way to 1 in 500. But dude, we're real ones out here. There's way too many Eevees around, so I said no sandwich. I checked every single Eevee spawn, and so I found one that was really close together and I just ran back and forth, back and forth. Without a sandwich, my odds were at about 1 in 1365, so it did take a while, but we were able to finally get ourselves a shiny Eevee. We ended up naming this Eevee Jer for no particular reason. And with that, Aldea is marked off of our itinerary and leaves us with one more location. This region is called Kitakami. Kitakami is actually the DLC to Scarlet and Violet, but it's a brand new region. And with this new region, we got a super cool evolution for Applin called Diplin, so I decided no matter what, I needed my hands on that shiny. There are these fields in the region that actually have a ton of Applin spawning on them, so I think it'd be super cool to get a shiny green apple to spawn on one of these trees. For this hunt, we did have to ask our good friend Mark to give us a shiny sandwich because there was a lot of other Pokemon that spawn and it gets super annoying to navigate around them. With the sandwich, our odds go to 1 in 1024 though since these are not mass outbreaks. And out of all these hunts, this one was probably the most fun. It really did feel like we were just out there picking apples. And if you want to do it yourself, if you hold down the left trigger, you could lock on to each apple in, and it makes it a little bit easier to spot the shiny one. Unfortunately, we did not get a shiny with the first sandwich, so we needed to make another one. And thankfully, with that second sandwich, it finally happened. Get caught on the level ball. Okay, that's a little capture. We'll take that. We'll take that all day, every day. Yo, let's go. Shiny Diplin, dude. Or Applin, gonna be a Diplin. Sorry, Jerry the Eevee gets swapped out. Here, fight that regular Applin. There he is. Dude, that green looks so good. Yeah, let me let me buy that syrupy apple. Okay, perfect. And there it is. 
shiny dip in the caramel apple. It's chef's kiss. And with that, our tour around the world is over. We got a shiny Pokemon in each region. Slowpoke and Jinx in Kanto, Elekid and Johto, Magikarp and Hoenn, three shiny Shinx and Sinnoh, Dratini and Unova, Quillfish and Kalos, Grumpig and Alola, Sharpedo and Galar, Happiny and Hisui, Eevee and Paldea, and finally shiny Applin and Kitakami. If you enjoyed this challenge and want to check out some more, check out this video right here, or check out my shiny Mew over here, wh wherever it is. It's somewhere around here.